People approach life in many different ways, but the best way and the only way to heaven is the Lord's way. Hello, I'm Phil Sanders, and this is a Bible study in search of the Lord's way. And today we're exploring the need to follow the Lord. Stay tuned. In all the hurry and hustle and confusion of modern living, the Lord has the way. We believe that the Bible is the revelation of His way. We invite you to join us in search of the Lord's way with Phil Sanders. Welcome to In Search of the Lord's Way. We're here to search the Scriptures for God's will. We love the way of the Lord and realize there's nothing better, nothing wiser, and nothing grander than following the Lord Jesus. Every day we thank God for all the love and blessing He's given us. And His grace is abundant and His way is blessed with love. That's why we study God's Word and share it with you. Thanks for taking time with us today. We want to be a part of your life each week. Many people think doing things to please yourself is the best way to live. Many like to imitate the popular song and say, I did it my way. And others say, well, you can't please everyone, so you got to please yourself. Our society, for the most part, has forgotten God and decided to walk its own path. Some today are like the people of Israel in the days of the Judges. Judges 21-25 says, In those days there was no king in Israel, and everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Some have rebellion toward God, and they have decided that they have a better way than God's way. They want life on their own terms, with their own morals, and despise anyone who gets in their way to live as they please. It never occurs to them that their ways may hurt others or offend God. Nor do they realize that God will hold them responsible for their behavior. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 11 and verses 9 and 10, Rejoice, young man, during your childhood, and let your heart be pleasant during the days of your young manhood, and follow the impulses of your heart and the desires of your eyes. Yet know that God will bring you to judgment for all these things. God loves us and wants us to serve Him so that we may live with Him forever. Now, we offer this study on God's Way free, and if you'd like a printed copy or CD of our study, and you live in the United States, mail your request to In Search of the Lord's Way, Post Office Box 371, Edmond, Oklahoma, 73083, or send an email to searchtv at searchtv.org. Or you can call our toll-free telephone number. That number is 1-800-321-8633. We also have materials free on our website at searchtv.org. The Edmund Church will now worship in song. We'll read from Isaiah 55, 6 to 11, and then we'll explore our need to follow the way of God. Our reading today comes from the book of Isaiah, the prophet, chapter 55, verses 6 to 11. Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. 
and let him return to the Lord, and he will have compassion on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there without watering the earth, and making it bear and sprout, and furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so will my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, without accomplishing what I desire, and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. That's a reading from God's holy word. Let's pray. O oh, Father, we're thankful for Your Word and that it accomplishes so much in our lives. Father, we're thankful that You share Your thoughts with us. Help us, follow, Father, to follow You and to listen to the things that You have to say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. David, by inspiration, wrote in Psalm 37, 5, Commit your way to the Lord, and trust also in Him, and He will do it. His son Solomon wrote in Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 7, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil." Now these words from David and Solomon reveal God's blessing for those who walk in His way. It's easy to trust our own understanding rather than listen to God. But the promise comes to those who acknowledge Him and turn from evil. Proverbs 10, 29 says, "...the way of the Lord is a stronghold to the upright." but ruin to the workers of iniquity. The Lord Jesus said in Matthew 7, verses 13 to 14, Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter through it, for the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Many people want the easy, popular path but it won't lead you to life. It has only one destination, ruin and destruction. The Lord is wise and He knows everything. He can see what we can't see and know what we can't know. He knows where the broad way leads. And so be wise and listen to Him and follow the narrow way. You can trust the Word of God to lead you to life. And you can trust Jesus. In John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Now, the way of the Lord is the way to truth, to life, and to the Father. Now, if you want to know the truth, follow Jesus. If you want abundant life, eternal life, follow Jesus. If you want to live with the Father throughout eternity, follow Jesus. 
He is the and the only way. Some folks lean on their own understanding, and they simply ignore what God says. Now, they may find a small pleasure now and then, but there will be trouble ahead. Proverbs 12, verse 15 says that the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man is he who listens to counsel. Now, the fool, in God's eyes, is the one who never takes God and His Word seriously. He follows his own path, does his own thing, and he doesn't care. When people ignore God and follow their passions, they choose a way that hurts them and hurts others. Proverbs 14 verse 12 says, There, there is a way which seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. When people listen to God and follow righteousness, God takes care of them. Proverbs 16 verse 17 says that the highway of the upright is to depart from evil, and he who watches his way preserves his life. Now, everyone thinks that he knows what's best for himself. But what's best for you today may not be what's best for you tomorrow or best for your soul. People have become experts at justifying their choices. Proverbs 21 verse 2 says that every man's way is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the hearts. People can choose very foolishly. Proverbs 4 verse 19 says that the way of the wicked is it's like darkness. They, they don't know over what they stumble. It's so much wiser to listen to God who will not lead you astray or into trouble. The prophet Jeremiah wrote, I know, O Lord, that a man's way is, is not in himself, nor is it in a man who walks to direct his own steps. Jeremiah 10 verse 23. I tell you, every single one of us needs God's wisdom. We need God's instruction. Now, God's way is a blessing to those who follow Him. David prayed in Psalm 86 and verse 11, Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. The psalmist realized how valuable God's ways are. And he said in Psalm 119 verses 104, From your precepts I get understanding, and therefore I hate every false way. For this reason, he said in Psalm 119, verses 128 to 30, Therefore I esteem right, that is, I look at your things as right, all your precepts concerning everything. God is right about everything. And so he says, I hate every false way. Those false ways lead to destruction. And so he says, Remove the false way from me, and graciously grant me your law. I have chosen the faithful way, I've placed your ordinances before me. Sadly, some will not walk with the Lord. Jeremiah preached for 40 years to people who didn't want to hear what he had to say. He wrote in Jeremiah 6, 16, Thus says the Lord, Stand by the ways, and see and ask for the ancient paths, where the good way is, and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. They said no to God, and because of it, God punished them. Some today are like the people in Ezekiel's day. Ezekiel 33, verses 17 to 20 explains, Yet your, Philist your fellow citizens say, Well, the way of the Lord is not right, when it's really their own way that's not right when the righteous turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, then he shall die in it. But when the wicked turns from his wickedness and practices justice and righteousness, he will live by them. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not right. O house of Israel, I will judge each of you according to his ways. I hear people today saying God isn't right for punishing certain sins. But we are His creatures, 
and He is our God. Let's remember that. Our task is to lead people back to the truth. James 5, 19 to 20 says, My brethren, if any among you strays from the truth, and one turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. We don't want anybody to be lost. Like David, we cry out, Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth. Teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day. Psalm 25, verses 4 to 5. Perhaps it's time for each of us to look at our own hearts and lives. David asked in Psalm 26 too, Examine me, O Lord, and try me. Test my mind and my heart. I tell you, I, I'm not here to judge you, my friend. I'm here asking you to examine yourselves according to the Scriptures. David asked in Psalm 139, 23 to 24, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. And, and see if there is any hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. Now, God already knew David's heart, but David needed to know what God knew about him. David wanted to be right with God and to walk in the everlasting way. He wanted to rid himself of evil. God has always wanted His people to follow His instructions, to believe and practice what He told them. In His last days before Israel entered the Promised Land, Moses said in Deuteronomy 5, verses 32 and 3, So you shall observe to do just as the Lord your God has commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right or to the left. You shall walk in all the way which the Lord your God has commanded you, that you may live and that it may be well with you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which you will possess. Many people are religiously confused these days. This isn't new. People hear a message and believe it. It has some truth, but not the whole truth. I'm reminded of Apollos. Acts 18, verses 24 to 26 tells the story. Now, a Jew named Apollos, an Alexandrian by birth, an eloquent man, came to Ephesus, and he was mighty in the Scriptures. Well, this man had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he was speaking and teaching accurately the things concerning Jesus, being acquainted only with the baptism of John. And he began to speak out boldly in the synagogue. But when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. I fear there are many like Apollos who need to know the way of God more accurately and to leave human ways and follow the Lord's way. Now, Apollos didn't get angry at Aquila and Priscilla for correcting him. He humbled his heart and he listened. And God used this eloquent man to teach the truth to many souls. I tell you, God will use us if we humbly listen and follow Him. The Scriptures teach there's just one way of being saved. God's grace is abundant and for all. But God expects everyone to follow His way rather than presume they can be saved through some other way. When the, Gentiles, when the Jews rather questioned whether Gentiles could be saved, Peter said God made no distinction between us and them, cleansing their hearts by faith. Acts 15 verse 9. And so Peter rebuked them for placing the yoke of Judaism on them, demanding that they keep the law to be saved. He said in verse 11, But we believe that we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus in the same way as they are also. Well, Peter had preached the gospel to them, telling these Gentiles words by which they would be saved, Acts 11 and verse 14. And he ordered them to be baptized, Acts 10 and verse 48. Yes, they believed and were baptized into Christ. The book of Galatians speaks of just one gospel. Galatians 1 verses 8 to 9 says, But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you, 
he is to be accursed. As we've said before, so I say again now, if any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to what you received, he is to be accursed. Paul repeated himself to make his point strong. If we buy into a false gospel, we may find ourselves lost eternally. Paul wrote in Galatians 3, 26 to 27, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Ephesians 4, 4 to 6 says, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Now, if these things are true, and they are, then the word one means there's only one and there cannot be another. If there's only one body, and Paul defines this body as the church in Ephesians 1, 22 to 23, then there's only one church. If there's only one Holy Spirit, there cannot be two. If our only hope is in Christ, there's hope in no one else. If Christ is our one true Lord, we cannot acknowledge any other Lord. If there is but one faith, then we must reject other faiths. If there's only one baptism, then we shouldn't practice a different one. If there's but one God and Father over all, then serving any other God would be wrong. There's but one way <clears throat> for each of these, and there's no other. Now, if you're unhappy with what I've said, then really what you're unhappy with is the Lord's way and unhappy with God Himself. You can't pursue some other way and enjoy the grace of God and His blessing. <coughs> God wants your heart and your soul to follow Him and live with Him. God told the prophet Ezekiel in Ezekiel 33, verse 11, Say to them, As I live, declares the Lord God, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. Why then will you die, O house of Israel? Let's pray together. O Father, help us to examine ourselves, to see if there be any hurtful way in us, and to turn from our evil way and to follow after life. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. The prophet Isaiah called to the people of Israel in Isaiah 55, 6 to 7, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord, and he'll have compassion on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. If you're living your life your own way, living by your own rules and forgetting the God who created you and loves you, you're heading in the wrong way. Wouldn't it be better for your soul 
to take God's way seriously. Now, each, each path we choose either leads us closer to God or farther from Him. According to His own promises, God lavishes His grace, His love, and His blessing on those who love Him and walk in His light. 1 John 1, 6 to 7 says, If we say that we have fellowship with Him, that is God, and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as He Himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus His Son cleanses us from all sin. Where are you walking? Are you in the light or in darkness? If you're walking in darkness, why would you stay there? Why would you miss out on the blessing of God? To start walking with the Lord, you must leave the old ways of sin and turn to God. And with faith and love in your heart, you must repent and willingly confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Now, at that point, you're ready to obey the Lord in the one baptism and immersion in water so that your sins may be forgiven. That's what the people at Pentecost did in Acts 2 and what you should do. God's promise is real, so obey Him. We hope that today's study about following the way of the Lord has stirred your heart. And if you live in the United States and want a free printed copy or a CD of this message, mail your request to In Search of the Lord's Way. Post Office Box 371, Edmond, Oklahoma 73083. Or send an email to searchtv at searchtv.org. Or you can call the search office toll free at 1-800-321-8633. Now you can download these lessons or a newsletter online at our website, searchtv.org. There's also a schedule of our programs and a map with the location of churches in your area. You can watch Search anytime on YouTube. Just subscribe to our channel, Search TV Ministry. Well, if you get a hold of us, don't worry. We're not here to get your money. We're here to help you get to heaven. So get involved with the Church of Christ. And if you're looking for a biblical church home, we'll be happy to help you find one. We'll be back next week, Lord willing. So keep searching God's Word with us and tell a friend. God bless you, and we love you from all of us at In Search of the Lord's Way.